tonight on Dateline, in this final episode of our two-part special on the China Dream, we'll explore what China's rise in power means for Taiwan, why it's the feared flashpoint for World War III, and find out how the Taiwanese feel about their identity and future. We know we are not China. People have no confusion of being Taiwanese at all. This is our country. So we're in one of the busier uh, sections of Taipei. And it's normally no more crowded, right, if it weren't for COVID. Enoch Wu is a former Special Forces soldier and now a rising star politician. And he's concerned the Taiwanese aren't prepared for the growing threat coming from China. Kids in Taiwan, in elementary school, folks go through earthquake training. We understand the do's and don'ts when we face a fire. But there are certain more catastrophic events that, uh, that we're less prepared for including a potential military attack. And uh, I think there's a heightened risk of that uh, with uh, all the investments that China has been making over the last few decades. This year, China upped its military intimidation of Taiwan. And whether it's bluff or not, there's global concern about the threat of invasion. China's missiles could reach every part of the island in minutes. The government has a list of all of the qualified air raid shelters in the city, and they put it on a map, and it looks like this. And these are a mix of underground facilities underneath office buildings, shopping malls, uh, residential uh, complexes. They're mostly parking lots, right, and car parks. Enoch says Taiwan's 20,000 plus air raid shelters are expected to accommodate more than 20 million people. And if you look around this, you'll see it's a nice parking lot but there aren't a lot of facilities, a lot of items that you might need in an air raid shelter, right? For example, you can feel how hot it is right now. Right? Ventilation's important, uh, power generation's important, medical supplies important, food supplies. And so if we believe that a uh, missile strike on Taiwan is a possibility, then we need more facilities that are fitted and equipped with items that could help the general population to shelter in those events. It's one thing to have air raid shelters, even if they are just car parks. But how can the people be better prepared? And do they even need to be? How serious is the threat from China? In short, it's quite serious, right, in my view. China spent the better part of the last couple of decades investing in its military, right? One of its core missions is to take Taiwan by force, if the Beijing leadership deems it necessary. So. I think the only way that Taiwan can avoid a military conflict is to really be prepared for conflict, right? They always say, right, the best way to prevent war is to prepare a fight. Taiwan's defenses are reportedly plagued by aging military hardware, supply issues, and motivation problems. Taiwan has mandatory conscription, but it's being reduced from two years to just four months and is ridiculed as a summer camp. There's no way of getting around the fact that conscription is unpopular in Taiwan. But it's unpopular for one main reason, which is for most of us, the time we spend in the military is too often spent on chores like, you know, marching and bayonet drills and almost too little or no time on combat training. Then no one leaves the military better prepared for a crisis. But we have to change that. Enoch is drawing on his special forces background and some fancy simulations to train up civilians to deal with disaster. So we're holding workshops, right, for folks like us. And we're saying, hey, this is how you de-escalate a conflict. This is how you treat a wound. This is how to recognize when someone is bleeding profusely. And this is how you stop the bleed. It's teaching everyone how do you be a first responder in emergencies. And that takes preparation on our part. And it takes us coming together as a society to say, hey, this is going to take all of us, not just our 160,000 strong military. Our goal needs to be so that every morning when the Beijing leadership wakes up from their China dream, they need to realize, hey, you know, today is not the day to take military action. 
Located off the Chinese coast, Taiwan is about half the size of Tasmania. And it's like nowhere else on Earth. Only a handful of nations recognise Taiwan as a country. For most of the world, including Australia and the US, its status is an ambiguity. But not for China. It claims Taiwan as its own, a renegade province to be reunified. The Chinese Communist Party has never actually ruled over Taiwan. But in Xi Jinping's China dream to rejuvenate the nation, taking control of Taiwan is high on the to-do list. It's also part of China's ambitions to control the South China Sea, giving it an advantage over trade routes and resources and the strategic high ground. This year, a record number of Chinese military planes have flown provocatively close to Taiwan. Now, while the US doesn't recognise Taiwan as a country, it does sell them military hardware. And it's widely assumed the US would come to Taiwan's aid if needed. That could rope Australia into a conflict between the world's two nuclear armed superpowers. I want to know what the Taiwanese government makes of the growing threats. Hello, Colas. Hi, Jennifer. Colas Yataka is the presidential spokesperson. Let's start with the big picture. What's Taiwan's greatest concern today? Mm, actually, the main obstacle for us today is our standing as an independent country has been uh, undermined by China. We have been telling people, ROC Taiwan is an independent country. We are a sovereign country that has our own uh, military, we have election, a president. So Taiwan's, ROC Taiwan's independence is a fact. ROC Taiwan is the abbreviation of Republic of China Taiwan. We'll get to that later. At the same time as Taiwan has this stance, China in the meantime says repeatedly that they will want to one day take Taiwan by force. Actually, the threat has been there for decades. But all we want to say is Taiwanese want peace. We don't want a war at all. But to send war plans flying over 28 times in one day, it's not peace. It's uh, destroying the status quo. Are there ways that China seeks to undermine the proper running of Taiwan? So misinformation and uh, fake news have been uh, attacking us for years. This kind of attacks is try to help to create the conflicts between our governments and the people. So I think this cognitive warfare has been initiated by China. And not just this year, it has started a long time ago. These non-military threats are called gray zone tactics. They're designed to disrupt the status quo and wear down the target they include barrages of disinformation, cyber attacks, and economic coercion. One recent example involves a stoush over COVID vaccines. Taiwan is stepping up its pandemic measures after a huge surge in COVID-19 cases. A vaccine shortage during Taiwan's biggest COVID outbreak has led to a public outcry for vaccines. Taiwan has for the first time directly accused China of blocking a deal with Germany's BioNTech vaccine developer for COVID-19 jabs. But Beijing rejected the accusation. China has offered to send doses to the island, which it considers its territory, but Taipei has expressed concern about the safety of Chinese shots. By refusing vaccines from China, the Taiwanese government was accused of putting politics above health. 
But when Japan and the United States donated vaccines to Taiwan, China objected and warned them to stop meddling in its internal affairs. The shenanigans are just one example of grey zone conflict. There are many more, even right on China's doorstep. Only nine kilometres of China's coast are Taiwan's Matsu Islands. Matsu used to be a front line when the two sides were at war. They're so physically close, this billboard was once used to taunt China. Tour guide Chen Sai Hua explains the message. She remembers when the island was attacked in the late 1950s. 听到那个声音,咻,嘣啊,那个声音。我们光是听那个声音而已。Today, there's a different kind of battle going on, a fight over what's at the bottom of the sea. Chinese sand dredgers have been illegally plundering these waters, ruining both the environment and livelihoods. This illegal judger has been here since October last year. Wen Li is a local politician. The sand dredger was illegally mining for sand in the waters near Mazu, which are considered Taiwanese restricted waters. Then Taiwan's Coast Guard detained it. You can see shards of broken seashells, and including sand and gravel and other parts of what used to be marine life. And it's, it's just a sad sight to see. It just affects the people's livelihoods on so many levels from fishing to tourism. It even affects our local infrastructure as underwater cables between the different islands of Matsu get destroyed or damaged. Taiwan's Coast Guard is outnumbered and outsized by the hulking dredges. The dredgers come in and out and trespass into the restricted waters and then run away. And it makes uh, law enforcement extremely difficult for our own Coast Guard. And last year, in 2020, sometimes you would see a large amount of dredgers around the waters of Matsu, up to 100 or 200 illegal dredgers surrounding Matsu. Wen Li suspects the dredgers are part intimidation tactics, part opportunism. Of course, we cannot deny there's an economic component. China is the largest consumer of sand in the world, sand and gravel, and they are willing to use illegal means to obtain the sand and destroy the environment. But then again, we do not rule out the possibility of this being part of a gray zone strategy or gray zone tactic with the goal of harassment and intimidation. If we just allow this to happen, then we just allow the destruction of our property and our environment. However, if we respond with military force, on these civilian dredgers, then it gives China a further pretext to further escalate tensions. The far southwestern tip of the island is the closest point to where the dredgers usually work. Aya Liu's hostel has an uninterrupted view. 
今天不多。对，你看那个最左边那一艘，它前面是有凸出来，船头有凸出来，但是这边一定是。Last year, Aya didn't have to look far. An impounded dredger was made to discharge its sand on the beach next to his hostel. 其实你现在看到目前这个照片，就这里，所以我们抽查团就会从我们这个门口经过。应该是说，呃，因为我们是军营改建的这个背包客栈，那以前我们是以前的军人是要拿来观测敌军，就是中共那边的军人嘛，共军。那现在其实某方面是有点类似。那变成是我们现在在观测这些抽沙船，呃，军民会感到恐惧啊，因为感觉好像是是不是要打仗还是什么，就是有一种被包围的感觉。因为我们就在最前线，我们住的地方在最前线，所以那个再加上，因为近几年不只是海上，空中的也很多嘛，就是军机也很多，所以就等于说空中跟海上它同时都有给你施压啦。The fishermen believe China wants more than sand, more than even Taiwan itself. They think China is playing a bigger game. To understand Taiwan, it helps to understand its history. Austronesian indigenous peoples have long called the island home. The Dutch and Spanish tried to colonize it, and China's Qing Dynasty held it for a little over 200 years. Which is why today China claims historical ownership. They lost it to the Japanese, who colonized the place for 50 years until the end of World War II. It then became part of the Republic of China. This was also the time of the Chinese Civil War, when Mao's Red Army was pushing out Chinese nationalist rulers, the KMT. Mao won. And about two million KMT soldiers and refugees fled to Taiwan, their last remaining part of the Republic of China. Mao's communist land became the People's Republic of China, and the world found itself with two Chinas. At first, Taiwan was seen as the real China, but that changed in the 70s when the US and the UN. Recognized Beijing as the official China, Taiwan's Republic of China became, well, that's where we are today, a largely unrecognized non-state. What's stopping other countries from recognizing ROC Taiwan as a country? I cannot uh, speak for other countries, but ROC Taiwan is an independent and sovereign country. I wonder if you could help me understand Taiwanese identity and the different ways that people identify. The people who consider themselves Taiwanese, the numbers is getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? We are living here. Like uh, people are, are born here. People have no confusion of being Taiwanese at all. This is our country. Being Taiwanese means different things to different people. While nearly everyone agrees Taiwan is not today's communist China, there's a divide between those who say Taiwan is the Republic of China, which is the status quo, and others who say Taiwan is just, well, Taiwan. Dong Zhijie is in the Republic of China camp. This is common for families like his, who arrived from China after the civil war 70 years ago. Hey, 
这个什么面食为主。但我母亲本身是道地的台湾人，她也喜欢吃米食，所以我们从小就是面跟米这样混搭。嗯，不好意思，煎的有点焦了。嗯、Dong Zhijie lives with his wife, two kids, and his elderly father. 阿公，海带要吗？对啊，不用。Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Bing. Grandpa was a KMT soldier who fought against Mao's Red Army. Like many, he fled to Taiwan in 1949. 不是穿木板啊，就是光脚。我这习惯了。But the new arrivals from mainland China weren't always welcome. 地的原来的那些，哎，台湾人就会称为说这些是瓦辛啊，就外省人，哦，就称为这是欧啊。然后像在台湾的人就是叫韩籍，韩籍就是番薯。哎，那像我，我就是所谓的。Being a so-called taro sweet potato, meaning a mix of Chinese and Taiwanese, meant Dong Zhijie's school life wasn't easy. 就会被什么现以前叫嘲笑，现在叫霸凌啊。那你怎么遇见妈妈的？啊？怎么跟妈妈认识，然后相恋，然后结婚？哦。我跟妈妈认识，是你那个表啊，就是姑阿姨啊，啊,啊，舅舅、亲戚，所有，一听大陆人不嫁，所有的北门的老百姓说，你女儿不能嫁给大陆人，大陆人一嫁回去啊，你女儿就完蛋了。后来他的亲戚也就不做哦。这个阿朱真好哎，这个阿朱非常好，后来结婚就生生你们两个，就这样。The family is typical of many Taiwanese families who arrived 70 years ago. They identify as Taiwanese, but are clear about their Chinese heritage and the name they like to give the place they live. 然后呃，国际爷爷是觉得自己是是大呃中国中国人还是台湾人还是中华民国台湾人？就是、应该还是就是他的认知就是他还是中华民国了。这点因为军人嘛，就是誓死效忠国家，所以他这种观念可能在他的身上就很根深蒂固，就是他还是属于中华民国。但其实我觉得两岸都是一家亲啦，也不要说。But the idea of the Republic of China, or ROC Taiwan, doesn't sit well with everyone. Many people, especially younger generations, identify as Taiwanese full stop. People like Aadzi. Aadzi's ancestors came from China a couple of hundred years ago. But he's a sweet potato through and through. No, because I'm the one who 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 I'm the one <laughs> Serving pork on rice is his day job. Adi is also a rapper. This song, oh, this song is called Basic Combo. Before Taiwan became a democracy, it suffered almost 40 years of military dictatorship under the nationalists that came over from China. That time is known as the White Terror, and it's why Aadzi has little love for the idea of the Republic of China.
，我袂当讲话，因为我无够个地位，无够分量，因看讲无看个身躯无够悬，在说钱嘛无够，在目睭内只有在团，目睭内无台湾是台湾，但是台湾是台湾人会用性命牺牲无好，你若是想要做，只身来出卖台湾，好中国，我跟你讲，跟你娘白是强暴。哎、欸，我忘词了。<笑>好啊，这个唱这首歌是这样。然后太久没唱这首歌。Ah Zi even makes a point of rapping in the Taiwanese Hokkien language, not in Chinese. 对，因为我今天还特别穿这件公仔衣，这是台文啊，台文公仔衣。OK， <笑>这就是恁的技能。我我我昨天讲一句话啊，就是你要你要为着台湾付出。简单，你得用你家己的方式去为着台湾付出。虾瓜就是我的方式，希望吼，不管你你伫国外，不管你是伫台湾，不管你是伫香港，哦，拢希希望你会当哦保护你家己哦，然后站出来，简单。好，回乡英雄，今日来个家，一起来撑香港哦，也顺便撑台湾。二零二零，所以那是咱的代志，对不对？Adi and many others in Taiwan watched China's recent crackdown of freedoms in Hong Kong in horror, and they worry: Is Taiwan next? Actually, I 在做的就是香港现在的哦，面临到的一些问题，就是香港现在面临到的一些问题。哎，老 Q， 你好。His friends also have strong opinions on Taiwan's identity and future. 还有，还有，还有，还有，还有。后来问一个，问问一个较尖锐的问题，就是。就最近中国拢做做爱，就是挑衅台湾啦吼。那你刚刚在中国人，安那，在你心内有啥物？你刚刚想要说明的话，会当甲讲出来。我是感觉，我是视而不见呐。因为因为本身，对啊，因为台湾人就是做台湾人的代志嘛，啊伊。无共国家嘛，无共国家啦，無國家台台湾中国一兵一公嘛。哎、The thing is, while many Taiwanese say their country already is independent, that's not recognised internationally. It's stuck in the Chinese civil war limbo as the Republic of China. That's the status quo. 那你说独立，他我我个人认知，他还是需要点目标。只要做对的事，呼对的口号，认清楚自己的地位，跟呃认同自己，这样就够了。The status quo has meant relative peace and stability for Taiwan, but with China saying it's determined to claim the place as its own, how long can the status quo last? <laughs> 